This video is on section 1-4 about measuring angles. And by the end of this video, I hope that you're able to define an angle, identify the name of an angle, I hope that you can find the measure of an angle when you're given a picture or by using a protractor to classify angles as acute, right, obtuse, or straight. And I also hope that you're able to use something called the angle addition postulate to find the measures of angles. Let's get started. I know that you've, you've seen angles, you've used angles, you've learned about angles. The definition that we'll use in this class is that an angle is formed by two rays with the same endpoint. Those two rays are called sides. Okay? And the common endpoint is called the vertex. Okay? Um, also, the inside of the angle is called the interior, and the outside is called the exterior. Okay? I don't think any of that's really complicated. It's just some names and some terms that we'll use when talking about angles throughout the year. Okay, so there are three ways of naming angles. Okay, the first and I think the most common way is to use three letters. We will write this angle symbol and then we'll write three letters in order B, A, C. Okay. Um, so I'm starting off with B, go through A, and then through C, okay? It's very, very important that this middle letter is the vertex, okay? Now, whether you, ha you start with B or start with C, um, it doesn't really matter. But that middle letter must be the vertex, okay? The second way of measuring of naming angles is sometimes we only have one angle at a particular vertex okay in this case um, angle a meaning this angle is the only angle that has a vertex at a okay so we can call it angle a but be careful with this because if there's another angle like if there was some other ray shooting off this way if there's m more than one angle at a particular vertex we can't use um, we can't use um, this way of naming. Okay, the third way is sometimes our angle is given a name by using a number. Like here, number one um, is the name of this angle, and so I can also call it angle one. Okay, so make sure you you got this. What are two other names for angle one? Okay, now for angle one, which is right here. Right here, um, it's angle J, M, K, or we could use angle K, M, J. Let me point out that you cannot say angle M because there's more than one angle at um, that has the vertex at M. Okay, um, when we measure angles in degrees, and this um, the notation we use for degrees is this superscript circle. Okay, I'm sure you've seen that before and used that before. Um, okay, so let's talk about how you actually measure or find the measure of an angle. If you consider um, ray OB, um, which is right here, and a point um, on one side of OB, that point we're going to call A, okay, um, Every ray in the form of OA, so every ray that that sticks off from a point, um, can be paired one to one with a real number from zero to 180. Now, what that means, um, and this is similar to the ruler postulate, is that every angle um, can be assigned a real number, and that real number we call the degree or the measure of that angle. Okay, so, um, and the way that we do it is by taking the absolute value of the difference of the degrees of those two rays. Okay, now, um, we'll use the absolute value again to make it positive, just like when measuring distances. Um, now, the measure of, of, ang of ray C 
is, well, we can use either the outside or the inside. Okay, and the truth is it doesn't really matter. We could use either one, but one is usually easier. Okay, in this case, I'm doing C minus D. And so I'm going to use the bigger number because I don't want to, um, I'll avoid using negatives that way. So I will take 135 minus, now I use the inside on C, so I'll use the inside on D. Um, and it looks like it's about 32. Okay, so the measure of angle COD is the absolute value of 103, which is equal to 103 degrees. Okay. Let me show you using a protractor. Okay, most protractors look like this. Um, where you have some kind of a circle in the middle. Now that circle is where the vertex goes. Okay, the vertex goes in the circle and then you line up um, the line on the protractor with um, one of the sides of the angle. Okay, now if you do that you'll notice that um, that the other side lines up right here and it looks like it's either like 125 or 55. Okay, now the one that we'll use is the one where down here I get zero. Okay, so the angle starting here going up here, and so I'm going to use the inside because then I have 55 minus zero instead of 180 minus 125. Okay, so 55 is the measure of this angle. Okay, let's do one more example down here. Again, I put the vertex um, in the circle, and I line up um, the side with this line on the protractor. Okay, and it looks like um, I have either 50 or 130. I'm starting with zero using the outside, so it must be on the outside. I get 130, and that the measure of this angle must be 130. Okay. Let me point out that sometimes you have protractors that look more like this, um, where there's not a hole in it. In that case, you'll line up um, the side with the, the edge, and then um, the vertex will go with the line. Okay, that's how you use a protractor. We'll have much more time to practice this in class. Um, but that's kind of a, and you can at least get familiar with protractors and how to use them. We'll use them. Um, off and on throughout the year. Okay, types of angles, you probably have, have heard of this before, um, but we have acute angles where the measure is between 0 and 90, a right angle where the measure is equal to 90, obtuse angles where it's between 90 and 180, and straight angles where the measure is equal to 180. And it's called a straight angle because it makes a straight line. Okay, what are the measures of angle LKN? LKN is right here. LKN. Now, since I have zero degrees, I'm going to use the inside, okay? Which means this, the angle of, um, the measure of angle LKN is 145 degrees, okay? The work would be um, 145 minus 0, which is 145 degrees. Okay. Um, the measure of JKL, JKL. Now, I don't have 0 to work with, so I'll pick whichever one I think is easier, and I'll just use the outside, because those numbers are smaller. And I have here bigger minus smaller just for ease. Um, 90 minus 35 is equal to 55 degrees. 55 degrees. And the last one, whoops, J angle J K N. J K N. Well, I have zero degrees. I will use the inside, and I have 90. 
Okay. 90 minus 0 is 90 degrees. 90 degrees. Okay. Classify each angle as acute, right, obtuse, or straight. Well, 145 is between 90 and 180, so it must be obtuse. Um, angle JKL is, is less than 90, so it must be acute. And angle JKN is equal to 90, so it must be right. Okay, um, angles are congruent if they have the same measure. Okay, and the symbol we use for congruence is this one right here, where it's um, a squiggly and an equal sign. Okay, so two angles are congruent if they have the same measure, um, and the measures are written this way. M angle A is equal to the measure of angle B. Okay, the M stands for measure. Now, they point out the fact that the length of the rays don't matter because they go on forever anyway, uh, but it's it's the measure of the, the angle that matters. And if the measures are the same, we say they're congruent. Okay, the angle addition postulate, very similar to the segment addition postulate. Okay, if point B is on the interior of angle AOC, then the measure of AOB, AOB, plus the measure of BOC, BOC, is equal to the measure of AOC, AOC. Okay, so in other words, the two parts added together is equal to the whole. Okay, so down here is an example. DOE is 75. And DOF, the whole angle, is 105. Okay, now, um, the sum of the parts is equal to the whole. So 75 plus X is equal to the whole of 105. Okay, to solve this equation, I will undo adding 75 by subtracting 75 from both sides of my equation. And I get 30 degrees as my answer. So this must be 30 degrees so that the sum of the parts is equal to the whole. Let's try another one. If the measure of RQT, RQT, that's the whole, is 55, what are the measures of the angles? Well, okay. Um, using the angle addition postulate, the sum of the parts is equal to the whole. So 4x minus 20 plus 3x plus 14 is equal to the whole of 155. Okay, once I can write that equation, I will then just solve it by combining like terms um, and then solving it. So I will combine 4x and 3x. 4x's plus 3x's is 7x's. And negative 20 plus 14 is negative 6 is equal to 155. Okay, now the first thing I'll do is to get rid of this minus 6 by doing the opposite of adding 6 to both sides. And 7x is equal to 161. Okay, and I undo a times by 7 by dividing by 7. And 161 divided by 7 is 23. Okay. Now, I know it's really tempting to say, oh, that's my answer, 23, um, but that's not what the question was asking. Make sure you always answer the question. The question is, what are the measures of the angles? So, I need to plug 23 back in to find the measures of the angles. So, the measure of angle RQS is 4x minus 20. I will plug 23 into x. Now, um, I will, let's see here. I will multiply before I subtract. So 4 times 23 is 92 minus 20 is 72 degrees. 
Okay, and the measure of angle SQT is 3x plus 14. X is 23. Again, I multiply and then I add, and I get 83 degrees. Now, if we checked it by adding those together, um, we do get 155. Okay? And I'm going to um, skip this one just for time. This video is about measuring angles, and I hope that you're able to define an angle, identify the name of an angle, um, define the measure of an angle when either given a protractor or a picture. I hope you can now classify angles as acute, right, obtuse, or straight, and also use the angle addition postulate.